Hello ladies and gents, I'm the Dapper Rat, and today I wanted to go over something really really important to the competitive gaming world and that is top-down balancing. Now for those of you who don't know, top-down balancing is the idea that games should be balanced based on the best player's performance. At face value, this doesn't seem like a terrible system, however an issue does arise from this. With that being said, let's begin. The main problem that arises from top-down balancing is the link between actual top-down balancing and believing that the best players know what's best for the game. The simple fact of the matter is that high-level players are not omnipotent gods here to write the objectively correct direction a game should go. They have their own biases and at the end of the day are usually playing a completely different game than people with less experience. On many occasions, over and over, for different games, popular players have made suggestions that are brain-dead level changes for their game. Luckily, in a lot of these cases, the devs have ignored these kinds of suggestions, but usually that stems from its own entire problem. I understand that people tend to believe that because top-level players know more about the game that they would know what needs to change in order to fix it, but that simply isn't true. Top-level players only know how to fix problems at their level of play and nowhere else, hence leaning into the bias that would lead to imbalance everywhere else in the game. At the end of the day, high-ranking players will ask for changes that help them just like any other person would. And, just like any other person, these biases would likely lead the game down a more unbalanced path than ever before. That being said, this doesn't mean that we completely shift gears into only listening to the majority of players. This would lead to the exact same problem as if you were to just listen to top of the players, the game would become unbalanced. At the end of the day, the overall objective is to create a more fun and fair experience for as many people as possible, and listening to any singular group of players will make no one happy. So then, what's the solution? How do we stop a game from being unbalanced for a specific group of players? Well, the answer is a bit convoluted. Based on community feelings, you can generally find what sort of action is needed. Say we split the community into four sections. Casuals, low rank players, mid rank players, and high rank players. Casual players will often play the game regardless of balance, and this is more so because they're interested in what new shit they can play aground with, so just by simply adding more content, you can keep these players, which means that for the time being, we can move them to the side. This leaves us with low, mid, and high rank players. If all ranks are on the same page and saying a character is too weak, then you buff them. A buff is changing content to be stronger than what it is now. This can range from increasing the size of hitboxes to making cooldown shorter. If all ranks are on the same page saying a character is too strong, then you nerf them. A nerf is changing content to be weaker than what it is now. This can range from increasing the size of hurtboxes to making cooldowns longer. Finally, if all ranks are on different pages for whether a character is too weak or too strong, or if buffs and nerfs aren't working, then a rework is required. A rework is subtracting or adding content, but keeping the core gameplay the same. This can range from completely taking away or adding certain abilities, to taking away or adding new ways to deal with certain problems. Finally, there is the most drastic measure. If all else fails, then a complete overhaul is required. If no amount of buffs, nerfs, or reworks are working, then that means that the overall core design of whatever is in the spotlight does not work within the game. Overhauls tend to lose players because it completely changes what some players might have enjoyed, and thus should only be used as a last resort. The difficult part of this solution is finding out what the problem is at different levels of play, and to try and help, I have a few examples. So, for our first example, we have Arissa. In Overwatch, Orisa has been a huge problem for the entire community. Across the board, players have been saying that she's too strong, Orisa has suffered the problem from buffs and nerfs not working on her, and her problem seemingly boils down to one ability called Fortify. Nerfing the cooldown of Fortify would be ineffective, as it would just make Orisa overpowered less often, but not necessarily make her less powerful. Tweaking the numbers of Fortify would also be ineffective, since there's no sweet spot. It's either so weak that using it for its intended purpose is inapplicable, or so strong that it can be used for all purposes. So, a rework is needed, either changing the properties of Fortify, making it into something different, or to completely scrap the ability altogether, switching it out for something else. As another example, we have Pharah also from Overwatch. She suffered from being too overpowered at low to mid ranks while being too weak at mid to high ranks. This was due to her playstyle, fly high and far to avoid being shot at while gaining the benefit from AoE projectiles. From what I can tell at high level play, her problem was that she was too easy a target. 
The mechanical skill of players at high ranks made it so that shooting at her was easy regardless of how high or far she was. At low level play, it was the low mechanical skill. Fair required little to no mechanical skill at all, shoot in the general direction of enemies, and reap the rewards. Players also have little mechanical skill which meant they kinda just had to watch if Fera took a shit on their team uncontested. The change the Overwatch devs made was a rework that overall buffed Fera. They gave her abilities to make it easier for her to move around, increase her projectile speed making it easier to hit targets from far away, and a few other changes. This overall made her more viable to play in higher ranks, and to compensate, they made it so that her time airborne was limited instead of having a pseudo-permanent flight. Overall, this rework is a buff and lower ranks suffered quite a bit because of it. However, beforehand, lower ranks were suffering because of Farah anyways. The limited airtime was not enough to make Farah less viable in low ranks, and now she is more oppressive than before, but oppressive for less time. When it comes to fixing Farah, personally, I think the problem lies in her weapon. At high ranks, it's too slow to be effective, and at low ranks, it doesn't require enough skill expression to be not effective. If her weapon was hitscan instead of an AoE projectile, she could contest players easier at high level play, but also need mechanical skill to make her less oppressive at low ranks. The main problem I see with this change is that it conflicts with the original design of the character too heavily. This would be considered an overhaul of her character, and this suggestion likely stems from lack of creativity on my part. I do believe there is a better answer for Farah, but I can't see it. And for our last example, we're going to branch into a different game called Dead by Daylight, specifically their haste mechanic. In DBD, there are perks and add-ons which usually give you advantages when you play. Amongst these advantages is the haste effect, which makes a player move faster, which is a big, big deal. The problem in many of these cases is that a lot of these perks slash add-ons are either very weak or very strong, and this is due to the fact that the haste effect stacks in certain cases. For example, if one perk gives you a 5% speed bonus and another gives you a 4% speed bonus, together they'd make you move 9% faster, roughly. A 5% speed boost is already really good, making 9% feel exploitative and unfair. This leads to some perks and add-ons being weak, needing a ton of requirements for a 5% speed boost or gifting a measly 2% bonus. Overall, the general community consensus seems to be that haste simply should not stack. Then, perks and add-ons involving haste can be buffed and nerfed appropriately. Overall, this just means that we need to be more aware of our biases. To remember that top-down balancing isn't balancing the game based on what top players think, but instead balancing the game based on how top players play, due to them usually exploiting the game better than anyone else. And finally, to not blow off ideas or problems from the general majority of players, as they're the ones keeping the game alive and supported. I thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. If you think I missed anything, have more to add, or think I'm just wrong, let me know in the comments, and as always, farewell ladies and gents.